An observant Fijawa breeder in Golden Bay noticed that many of his Fijawa varieties were resistant to fungal attack, even after being damaged. He approached researchers at Victoria University to help him find out more. Dr Rob Kayser explains where this early research is leading in the field of biodiscovery. Here at Victoria University we have what's called the Centre for Biodiscovery and the whole premise behind that internal research centre is to bring different research groups with different experiences and expertise together to try and solve issues in drug discovery and biodiscovery basically. Back in early 2013 I got a phone call from a Fijoa breeder by the name of Nigel Ritson, who works with a company called Foretaste for Joas. And Nigel um, develops a whole uh, large number of new crossbreeds every year. And uh, he had made two distinct observations. One was that uh, if you have a Fijoa fruit and for whatever reason you, it gets damaged or it gets cut, uh, exposes the, the flesh of the, the fruit on the tree, um, that the fajoa fruit is really resistant to fungal infection. And then the second observation he made is that he's been able to develop a way of taking his crossbreeds and basically predicting whether the uh, progeny will taste good or have a certain fruit size or shape. And he was starting to wonder whether we might be able to get some sort of predictive quality from his crossbreeding to select fruit that have enhanced resistance to infection, and in particular, fungal infection. So his idea was to basically try and develop a clean and green antifungal material from Fajoas. There's two aspects to this project. One has been the chemistry side, the analytical chemistry, and the other is the antifungal bioactivity work that Andrew does. We've looked at a number of different Fajoa varieties, and so what we've been trying to do is to do a chemical profile of each variety, measure the different constituent chemicals within both the peel and separately the pulp, and then compare that chemical profile with the observed antifungal activity, which is what Andrew does. And then look for the ones that have the maximal antifungal and then correlate that to their chemical profile and start to use some statistics then to say, well, that's the compound, that's the chemical there that's going to be mediating the antifungal activity. We've achieved proof of concept for validation of Nigel's idea, actually. It was his concept. And through our PhD student, that Andrew and I share, Mona, she's taken 16 different Fijo varietals. She's analysed the chemical composition of them. She's done the bioactivity profiling. And there is a very nice correlation between the chemistry and the observed antifungal activity. And she's now going through the process of actually figuring out well, okay, that's the one compound or two compounds in a Fijoa that are largely responsible how do they elicit their antifungal response? So I think we've been able to, to validate Nigel's idea that um, through some clever chemistry and biology um, that we can start to tease out these complicated um, uh, mixtures, which you find in a fruit, and actually start to, do, to come up with something useful from them. So what we do is we obtain the varieties from Nigel in Takaka, Mona, isolates the compounds, and what we do in this particular lab is we expose those compounds to yeast. We use yeast for its genetic power and its antimicrobial power. So yeast is a fungus, so just by nature, we automatically get an insight into potential antifungal activity. We expose the compounds to the yeast, and then initially we just look for antifungal activity, so, and then, uh, how much does the compound inhibit the growth of yeast? Um, and then if we find, find that there's a compound that's, that shows antifungal potential, we need to do two extra things. One is to identify that that antifungal mechanism is distinct from the already established antifungal mechanisms. And then secondly, we need to test its antifungal potency against other fungi. So far we've been working on it about two years and we've gotten about 16 different varieties from Bejoa Fortaste and we've identified the compounds in each of these varieties. And so what's interesting now is to compare the chemical compound profiling to the pedigrees and see if breeders can exploit our 
findings and potentially breed certain varieties just for particular traits. I can foresee the idea would be to try and use these predictive qualities to say, well, here's a fruit that tastes good, but should have a greater resistance to infection, hopefully might have a longer lifetime, be able to be shipped overseas without worrying that it's going to degrade because of, of rot. Um, uh, and so A, develop a, a, a better export fruit. Um, and the second sideline might be to develop, a, as I said before, a clean and green um, antifungal uh, product. It doesn't necessarily have to come from a fruit that tastes good, or it could come from skins that are a byproduct of flagella processing, um, but that uh, we could then actually market and make something use, some use of a, a waste, waste product. Um, I'm not saying that the varietals we've looked at necessarily are going to tick those boxes yet, but what we've been able to show, I believe, is that there is that kind of promise in, in the project. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.